Welcome to the Everything Building Envelope podcast. On this show, we discuss topics relating to the exterior building envelope, such as waterproofing, glazing, cladding, roofing, and more. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes and Stitcher. For previous episodes, show notes, and bonus video content, check out our website, everythingbuildingenvelope.com. Now, here's your host for the Everything Building Envelope podcast, Paul Beers. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Everything Building Envelope podcast. I'm Paul Beers, the CEO and managing member of GCI Consultants, and I'm going to be the host today. I'm really excited today to have as my guest, Desmani Homerone, who's a senior partner at the law firm of Farrell, Patel, Homerone, and Lopez with offices in Miami, Tampa, and Puerto Rico. Desmani, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So, Jasmani, can you please tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your firm, and then we'll jump right sure. into the topic. Sure. Thanks for having me. My name is Jasmani Homarong. I'm the managing partner of Ferro Patel, Jamarin, and Lopez. We've been in this business for over 10 years and exclusively in the insurance industry business, handling all kinds of claims, whether it's a residential homeowner claims, commercial claims community association claims like condos and HOAs. We work with many experts in the field. We have a network of individuals that we can address most of the concerns raised by insurance policyholders. It, we're also a big player in the BP oil spill crisis. We handled over 4,000 hotel claims at the time. So we have a lot of uh, resources in this industry and we're available to help you guys with anything insurance related that you might need. Yeah, so I'm really excited because, you know, you and uh, which the listeners, we're going to tell them a little bit about it. They don't know this yet, but you and I have worked together now on um, a bunch of hurricane claims in Puerto Rico and in Florida. It's been, you know, a good experience. So we'd like to share that today with, with our listeners and hopefully offer them some insight because we've got that, what's that date that's coming up any day now? The start of the hurricane season. Yeah, so it's another year. Hopefully nothing happens, but sometimes it does. And well, we got enough to deal with right now with this pandemic, but we always got to be prepared just in case. Yeah, you know, I mean, it almost stands a reason that it's a terrible thing to say, but, you know, we have the pandemic, so probably we'll get hassled by hurricanes this year, too, to freak everybody out. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking that we've worked together and we've worked on some of the recent storms and I thought maybe we'd just kind of talk a little bit about that. Irma, Maria, Michael, and then Dorian, which haven't done much work on yet, but that was the one that really scared everybody last year, a super storm. And we started out on Maria. Do you want to maybe share some insight? Because I know that you've got deep connections with Puerto Rico as far as how that's all going. Sure. Our main connection with Hurricane Maria are the claims that we're doing in, in, in Puerto Rico. There, what we did is we mainly focused on how we could help the community the most, and we decided to focus on municipal claims and, you know, the bigger condominium claims and commercial claims in, in Puerto Rico. And one thing that we ran into there was the fact that they didn't have the insurance laws in place like Florida does to really be able to stand the chance against some of the insurance companies' defenses. For example, they didn't have statutory fees. They didn't have statutory bad faith. They didn't have civil remedy notices. And they had a, a very significant problem with the statute of limitations and some of the tactics being employed by the major insurance companies on the island, for example including accord and satisfaction language on the back of these checks so that if you tried to cash a partial payment, you know, it would immediately settle your claim. So those are some of the things that we dealt with when we first entered the, the market. And what we did is we spent most of 2018 lobbying to change those laws and we were successful. So we were able to have basically the, the verbatim version of the Florida insurance codes, uh, civil remedy notice and their statutory bad faith and their statutory fees, we were able to translate it to Spanish and get it passed in Puerto Rico. So now Puerto Rico has that for future claims. And we're still working on that. There's significant litigation. Things are, are moving very slowly, unfortunately, in Puerto Rico, but we feel confident that this is going to come to an end soon. Yeah. So my non-lawyer amateur view when I first went in there was it was kind of like the wild, wild west. Nobody really seemed to know what was going on. And 
people were afraid to even put claims in and it was, it was a big mess. And I know that you guys have done a lot of work on that and, and kudos to you for you know, taking on a really big challenge and, and trying to help people out and, and get everything straightened out. Well, we always try to do our best as a firm. That is definitely one of the things that we focus on. I mean, Hurricane Dorian, for example, we weren't too involved as far as claims are concerned, but we tried to do our best to help the Bahamas. And through our firm, mainly led by our partner, Ricky Patel, we were able to use our, our online presence and social media presence to be able to you know, reach out to our followers and ask them to donate materials and, and supplies to the Bahamas. And we got a huge response. We had no idea the type of response that we were going to receive. We set out to have 500 pounds of merchandise sent over to the Bahamas. And what ended up happening is we received between everyone, once we did the tally, it was 130,000 pounds. It sounds like an exaggerated wow. number, but it's <laughs> true. And it, it ended up making the news because we ended up having so many people were mailing things to our office that we had Amazon trucks, UPS trucks, you know, FedEx trucks, it's, you know, you name it, lined up down the street, down Biscayne Boulevard, the police showed up, code enforcement showed up, the fire department showed up, all trying to figure out what the heck was going on in our office. And when they figured out what was happening, they put their stuff down and they started helping us carrying things. And, you know, we were we were able to use some of our, our connections to get the things delivered over there. We got our stuff out there before even some of the, the, the biggest contributors like the Red Cross. And a lot of the, the merchandise that was distributed in the Bahamas at the beginning was as a result of this effort. And we got that stuff. Out. So that's how we were involved in Dorian, not in the claims process, but at least in helping the community. And boy, they really needed it too. I mean, that was um, just unimaginable, the, the intensity of that storm and then how long it just sat there pounding on them. Yeah, absolutely. That was something that we were very happy we were able to do. Yeah, great job. And then, you know, the other storms, the Florida storms, Irma, which, you know, basically that was 2017. So we're getting, you know, we're, we're two and a half, over two and a half years from that now. And that was a really big storm that got a good swath of the main part of the state of Florida, right on up through the middle. You know, started in southwest Florida, hit Miami hard, and then went right up through the middle of the state. And then Michael in the panhandle was another one of these really intense storms. I was blown away by how severe the damage was. It was like a 40 mile wide tornado went through there and just crushed everything. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Irma was one of the the stronger storms we've seen, uh, caused one of the highest uh, amount of property damages, and we're still dealing with you know a very large amount of claims uh, for Hurricane Irma, whether it be residential, commercial, condominium, you know, community associations, you name it. There's a lot to debate about Irma because although it was a very very strong storm, the insurance company's position in a lot of these claims has been that the storm didn't create these damages, this is wear and tear, or these are, you know, pre existing items or faulty construction or whatever it is, and they're they're doing their best to avoid pain on, on a lot of these. So unless you meet, you know, very technical requirements like um and you know, people in the industry are very familiar with it, but you know, homeowners and, and condominium associations are not as familiar with it. For example, you know, being able to photograph the opening from where the water intruded in your roof. It's not enough to just say, hey, water's intruding. Insurance company is going to insist that you take a picture of the hole. <laughs> and it's become almost like, a, we almost say it jokingly at this point, but that is what it is. You have to have a picture of that hole. And um, as far as, you know, for what our work is with the community associations, it gets way more complicated than that. And it, they start doing research about, you know, your maintenance and your minutes and you've had multiple boards and then it becomes a, a situation where if you don't have certain records, you might, you know, you can get accused of spoliating the evidence and, you know, those become a little bit more complicated unless it's a very clear open and shut case of damage. For example, a window being blown completely through, you know, that's something that insurance yeah. company will say, all right, we'll pay for that, <laughs> you know. But, you know, some of the work that you and I do together, Paul, on being able to explain how where a window is not completely blown through, but it's still damaged by the hurricane, usually there's a lot of, that's met with a lot of resistance. Yeah, so, you know, it's funny, that's, that's been my experience, is that, that the insurance companies 
that they basically, with windows and doors, if, if the window's on the ground, then, you know, sometimes they say put it back in, which is a little really extreme, but normally they'll okay. pay for that. And uh, broken glass is another thing, but they seem to limit what they're willing to pay for to those two events when, you know, the, and I'm not an insurance expert, policy expert, but the policies, you know, basically say they'll pay for damage. So they're defining damage in a very extreme way where a window or door that may still be in the opening and say it's bent or twisted or, you know, not, there's lost some of its integrity or leaking water, they almost never agree to that. Yeah, that's, that's definitely our experience. And that's why uh, you and I got so much work together. <laughs> um, putting, but, those, uh, putting those claims together and, and backing it up by the science. Yeah, and I think we both have found is that, you know, as time has gone on, people have come to realize that their windows were compromised by the storm. Even if, even again, if it's not broken or, or blown out of the opening, they're having issues with more noise coming through them. They're having water intrusion occurring in normal weather patterns as opposed to, you know, just during the storm and things like that. So, if, you know, so, sometimes these, it's not really readily apparent right after the storm. Everything seems intact, but there's underlying and sometimes hidden damage that's coming up later. Definitely. I know we're we're talking about preparing for for this hurricane season, but one thing I, I think it was important to mention specifically about Irma is the fact that a lot of these policies are going to be expiring as far as the time frame allowed to fall suit or to make a claim. On many of these commercial policies it's three years. So this September 2020, September 10, 2020, there's going to be a lot of policies out there that if you didn't make your claim, you might be out of luck at this point. If someone's got, so let's say someone's got, you know, in the path of Irma and are having these problems, maybe they submitted a claim and it was denied or, or they paid for the three broken windows and nothing else or the broken glass. Or maybe maybe they never even submitted a claim, but they're having all these problems. At this point, is there anything that they can do, or, or what should they do? I guess maybe be a better question. Well, definitely, for sure. If an insured believes they may have property damage, they should definitely take a look. Especially if you're a com if you're a condo association, or you know, and you owe fiduciary responsibility to the other homeowners, or if you're you own a commercial property and you know you owe what responsibility maybe your business partners to have these properties checked, especially when there's firms out there like ours that is available to go and do this inspection for you for free. And that's something that, that we do on, our, on a regular basis for our commercial clients and our you know, condominium clients. Where there, there's a question, we'll go out there and take a look at the whole property. Many times we'll even invite you to pause, you know, and you know, you'll take a look at the building envelope and, and a lot of times we'll do a pre-inspection and let you know if we believe you might have a claim from Hurricane Irma or, you know, at least give you a health check on your property, especially going into hurricane season, which is, you know, what we're here to talk about today, right? So what can we do to prepare for hurricane season? Definitely have an inspection by somebody, you know, like us that's qualified to do it and willing to do it for you so that you can have pictures, you can have documented uh, proof of the condition of the property before you go into the storm season. So in the event you do have damages, it's going to be really easy to prove to the insurance company during the claims and adjusting process that these damages didn't exist before the storm and that now they exist. And here's the before and after pictures taken by, you know, other licensed public adjusters and experts like yourself and engineers, depending on what's necessary. Many times we go ahead and we hire the right expert to go out there and take a look at these items. And for those insureds who believe they might have Irma damages, this is your chance. You got very little limited time from that of September. If you're one of those policyholders where the policy says three years versus the standard Florida law, which is five years on breach of a written contract. You know, some of these policies are going to reduce that time to three years. So this is really kind of like your last chance to go in there and double check. You know, and this is important because the insurance company is definitely going to take that position. Let's say now you do have 
another claim or you have a new loss, if there's aspects of your building or your property that were actually damaged before by Hurricane Irma, they might take the position that, well, we'll pay you for the new damages, but the old stuff, you should have made a claim under Irma under whatever policy you had at the time, and now you can't do it anymore. That's a really good point. So, you know, we hear that all the time, you know, that they're looking to see if there was a prior event that, that they could basically say that's the reason it's damaged, not because of, of Irma. So, and then I really like the whole thing you were just talking about with getting it looked at beforehand. I've I've been involved in a lot of claims at this point, you know, from an expert's perspective. And if I have a report or really credible documentation of what the condition was before the storm, it makes it much, 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 much easier to present, you know, present the condition of the property and to be able to show, yes, this was caused by, by Irma or by, you know, whatever, whatever the storm was. Absolutely. Or, or at a minimum, showing that the property is in great condition. And now when there is damages, the only cause has to be whatever this new storm is or whatever the new cause of loss is. Right. You, you can't do it after the event, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, exactly. we try to piece things together forensically, you know, and we can do a nice job with that. But it makes it so much easier to have some sort of history from before the event. So talking about the damage, you know, running out of time and whatnot, what, just, just so that the listeners really get a good understanding of what's in play here, what are some of the common damage types that your firm is running across? We talk, I know we talk about windows and doors being one thing, but what are some of the other things that they should really be paying attention to at this point for issues that have arisen because of a prior storm? Well, the issues from a prior storm, I mean, and, and it could be not even limited to prior storm. It could, we've had, we have condo, we have a condo claim now where it's a prior construction defect case, you know, and the insurance yeah. companies, that's one of the biggest things they're looking for. I feel when you make your claim, they're trying to make sure that the cause of loss that you're suggesting it is and you're claiming it is, is actually what it was. And that's where, like in a big condo claim, they're going to ask you, well, we want to see all your maintenance records. We want to see what's been going on with the windows. How often have you been fixing them? Have you had any other reports about these windows being damaged or the roof? What's been the condition of the roof? How old is it? And have you had other leaks? You know, have you had other unit owners complaining? Have you been planning on replacing them it anyway? These are items that they're going to be looking for. and They're going to be trying definitely to shift responsibility in the direction where maybe a policy exclusion or some kind of a limitation would apply so that the, you know, it, it could be avoided, you know, to be paid based on the policy. And one of the things that you could do to avoid that is definitely knowledge is power. Now you know about it. You know this is where they're going to be coming from. So definitely a health check before any storm is, is very important. It's something that could be act, uh, done on a yearly basis. And, and I know both of our firms are actually available for things like that. And definitely yeah. a free service that should everybody should take advantage of who's listening to this. And then keeping good records, you know, because there will be a record request at some point and you want to have a clear chronology of what's been going on with your property. If you're a residential homeowner, something I always recommend is, you know, do an inventory of your personal property. Take a video with your phone. Now everybody has a cell phone with HD quality camera, right? So you can take a video of your whole house of what your inventory is before the storm comes, you know, store important documents in, in a waterproof place. You know, this, uh, this applies to commercial claimants and, and condo claimants as well who have all these records. And, you know, in the event of a storm, you don't know what's going to happen. and You don't know if some of these things can be lost. So, you know, digital copy is also very important too. Now, some of the things that, that we're running into, for example, will be, like I said, like, you know, we'll, we'll have a roof claim and on a residential property. The insurance company will say, well, that's wind driven rain. You know, we don't see what's called direct physical loss, right? We don't see that a branch came and, and you know, it was the wind blew the branch and hit the top of your property of your home and made a hole in the roof that caused the water. That's like a very clear case from an insurance company's point of view of a claim that they would pay because they're showing direct physical loss. But if you're in the middle of a storm, you've never had leaks in your home. And now you're having leaks from, from different places in your roof and your ceiling. You're not exactly sure where it's coming from. Insurance company will say, well, that's just, you know, wind driven rain. That's just, um, 
you know, you have an old roof, so we're not going to pay for that unless, you know, you could show how exactly the storm caused these damages. And that's where, you know, we we'll get experts, we'll do all clip tests, we'll, we'll do all kinds of stuff. And, and like you said, kind of do a forensic analysis of the claim from that point of view. That's one thing we've definitely run into on a, on a very, very regular basis. Another thing we're running into is a lot of uh, homeowners are buying policies that have water damage exclusions or very significant limitations to like only $10,000 because these policies are, I guess, less expensive and they're more widely available on the market and they're just becoming more and more popular, which makes it difficult to make, you know, water claims on residential properties when you have that. Yeah. You, you mentioned old roofs and, and you know, and, and I guess the same thing would apply to older windows and doors. Does that? Of course. Would that preclude somebody from filing a claim or from having damage if they have an old roof or old windows and doors? No, no, not at all. I mean, there's definitely policy exclusions to talk about wear and tear, talk about, you know, faulty workmanship or latent defects that are not going to be covered. And with the insurance company is always going to be pointing out and what we as insurance professionals do is we're always looking for the direct physical loss. But as I, I always like to say, the insurance company insured it in that condition. It's an old roof. They give you a brand new policy every year, it gets renewed. And they're saying, we're insuring this old roof against direct physical loss. So just because you have an old roof doesn't mean it's automatically excluded. You just got to have a good insurance professional be able to explain to the insurance company how your old roof suffered new damages as a result of this cause of loss, this new storm. And then you're, you know, we get old roofs paid all the time. And then, you know, you have a further analysis as to what kind of a policy do you have, you know, replacement cost policy versus an actual cash value policy, which don't, the difference is if it costs, you know, let's say $30,000 to replace your roof, but you have an actual cash value policy, they're going to say, well, your roof is a little old. We're going to, we're going to depreciate it by X percentage and pay you what's called actual cash value. If you have a replacement cost policy and you go ahead and you do replace the roof and your invoices are, are higher than the estimate paid by the insurance company, then you're entitled to make a supplemental payment and get that, that depreciation that was withheld paid to you or even supplement the claim to be higher because you went ahead and you replaced the entirety of the roof and it was higher than whatever the insurance company estimated. So that's definitely for purposes of, of residential. For condo claims, it's, it's very similar. You know, it it works similar in that sense to, to a residential claim where just because you have an old roof doesn't mean that it's not going to get paid. We get them paid all the time. You just got to, you know, customize a strategy for every single claim and make sure that, you know, you provide the insurance company with the information that they need so that they can pay it pursuant to your policy. Because the insurance company does have an obligation or opportunity, I don't know what the word is, to actually, you know, confirm the condition of what they're issuing the insurance policy for. In other words... If it's an old roof, they should know that. And unless they say they want to exclude it from the policy, then they've kind of got their eyes wide open going into the deal, don't they? Absolutely. And especially for the bigger commercial uh, policies or the condo policies, most of these insurance companies will go out there and do an inspection themselves. So it makes it even more difficult for them to take the position that they weren't aware of something with your roof. you know. But definitely the key is, you know, direct physical loss is always going to be a little bit more difficult. And you and I run into this situation all the time when the insurance company doesn't see the window on the ground, they're going to say, well, we don't really know. You know, I read a, an opinion yesterday that was saying that, you know, everybody starts stands on the top of a pin, you know, you know, because, you know, you're trying to like reread the policy exclusions in a way to, to avoid coverage if possible. But that's why, you know, People like us are in business because we need to now get in there and at an expert level, at a scientific, technical level, be able to explain how these things are happening and how they're real. Even if you can't exactly see them, you could still, through science, prove, for example, that these windows and these doors have been compromised by these very, very strong winds, you know, and, you know, putting as an insurance lawyer, you know, it's really important for us to have a big network of, of experts and qualified individuals that are going to be available to give us these opinions so that we can prove these cases for our clients. So in a window and door situation, an envelope, building envelope situation, you know, you're, you're definitely one of the guys out there that's going to help us, you know, put this together. You know, we might need after that an engineer to, you know, to put together a roof claim or we just recently handled uh, an elevator claim for a condominium association where the, the insurance company took the position that it can't be repaired even though it was flooded completely in water. 
So we had to hire an elevator expert to give us the opinion that no, once these electrical components in the elevator have been submerged in water, even though the elevator might be working right now because it dried out, it's definitely decreased the life expectancy of those electrical components significantly to the point that, you know, the expert recommended, you know, replacement of all of those components. And with that expert's report, we were able to convince the insurance company to agree with us. So that's what we do. That's what we all do in this space. So the elevator story is an interesting one because what is the insurance company's, I I know policies are different, but just in general, what is the insurance company's obligation to to get it working again? Does that meet the requirement of what they're supposed to do? Or do they have to have it in a certain condition to basically meet the requirements of, or or the obligations of of the insurance policy? Well, I mean, it largely depends on the type of policy you have. And especially when we're talking about elevators, it means we're going to be in a commercial policy or or condo policy. Commercial policies are going to be 100% custom. I mean, they're going to be custom made usually, you know, together with the insured and the the agent, depending on what kind of coverages you need. And for a condo claim, it it makes it a little bit easier because there's actually a Florida statute on point that dictates what needs to be covered by these policies. So taking a condo claim, for example, definitely an elevator would be considered a common element of the condominium association, which has to be on the insurance policy. The statute even states if it's not on the policy, well, as a matter of law, it's gonna be on there because Florida law dictates it when it comes to condominium policies. And the condominium policies are replacement cost policies. So the elevator is damaged, definitely, if an expert explains that, you know, it needs to be replaced, then that's what the, you know, that's what the insurance company needs to pay for. Albeit they'll pay you ACV at first, like we discussed earlier, and actual cash value. That means that there'll be a depreciation holdback, and you won't get that depreciation holdback until you show proof of you know invoices where you actually incurred the cost to go ahead and replace that elevator. Um, but yes, that is exactly what you would be entitled to under your policy, and you know, at least in a condo claim. And you know, I would anticipate for most commercial policies, it's going to be the similar situation too, except the difference between maybe you won't get the full replacement cost value. Okay. So like roofs, so so just another example, say roofs, they would have damage to some of the roof tiles. Can they just replace the broken tiles or they have an obligation? I mean, is that considered good enough for the insurance remedy or do they have to sometimes go beyond that? So that's an issue that comes up every day, right? The roof and how much of the roof requires for replacement versus a repair, right? In the residential context, you know, if you have a few broken tiles, the insurance company will normally say, well, we'll just pay you to replace the three tiles. Then there's the argument, well, those tiles are no longer available, so we need it to match, right? So where are we going to find these tiles? Then you get in, you know, and there is a matching statute in Florida, but that only applies to residential claims. So then you start with that back and forth. Can you find these tiles? Can you not? Are they still approved by the city, by the county, you know, to be on roofs in Florida or in your particular part of town? And many times what kind of the rule of thumb we look for is if more than 25% of a residential roof compromised. And then at that point is where we start talking about a full roof replacement based on the matching statute. But when you talk about a commercial claim or a condo claim, it becomes more complicated, right? So in a, in a condo claim, it's, we're talking commercial now, so there isn't a matching statute for roofs. Right. Or for anything else, frankly, because this could apply to paint, could apply to stucco, could apply to a number of items uh, that could be damaged during a storm. Right. So specifically on the issue of the roof, it's going to be more a situation of is the city or the county or whoever the, the inspectors that are going to be you know, supervising this job, are they going to require you to do a full roof replacement? And if we're talking about a condo policy that has a replacement cost policy, no matching statute. You have proof of direct physical loss to a portion of the roof. If the inspector says, no, a repair is fine, I mean, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a repair. If the inspection requires a full roof replacement, well, then you're going to argue to the insurance company, I'm going to need a full roof replacement at that point. But then the debate becomes whether or not this is what's called ordinance and law coverage, which typically is further limited, you know, usually about 25% of whatever your, your full policy limits are. So then in that case, you're going to actually have to show as a policyholder that you did in fact replace your roof because ordinance and law per statute is only going to be paid when you show you actually incurred this cost. And that's when you're going to be able to, under an ordinance and law portion of the policy, get the full roof replaced in that situation. 
it's a little bit complicated, but I hope that efficiently answers. No, it's good. So, you know, it, it is complicated. And so I guess that begs the question, why is all this necessary? I mean, why do people need to go through all this? Why don't they just, you know, submit their claims and get them paid? Well, I mean, that is definitely a question I get all the time. Why do we need you? Why do we need a law firm? Why do we need to sue the insurance company? Why do we need all these experts? You know, isn't that what I'm paying for on my policy already? And you are paying for that. The whole point of these insurance policies, when you have a claim, you should be in good hands, right? You should be able to just call your insurance company who already has a contractual fiduciary obligation to adjust your claim. And adjusting means that they're going to come out there, do an inspection, and, and tell you what your damages are. Many of these policies are all risk policies, which means everything's covered unless there's a specific exclusion. And in, in a situation like that, you could say, hey, look, my roof is leaking now. Everything is covered. So you insurance company show me how this is not covered. Why do I got to show you the hole? <laughs> I refer to that because that's kind of been the debate. But they're saying, well, it's excluded because it's wear and tear. It must be an old roof that's failing because that's why it's leaking, you see. So the reason we have to do this is because insurance companies at the same time, I mean, it's not all bad, right? I mean, they're also trying to make sure that they're only paying for legitimate claims, you know, and definitely, yeah. you know, the industry needs insurance companies only to be paying for legitimate claims. And then sometimes, you know, these claims, it becomes a matter of debate, you know, whether or not the claim is as a result of direct physical loss. Or, and it's because what we were discussing earlier, you, you're going after the fact. So you have a storm, you have damages, you speak to the client and 90% of the time I tell the client, okay, show me your records of the maintenance of your house. They're looking at me like, what? I don't keep records of the maintenance of my house, you know? Well, when was the last time you replaced the, the roof or did you, do you have a, you know, one of those wind mitigation reports or one of those home inspections when you buy your property? Sometimes we're close enough from the property purchase that we have that and it does give us a pretty accurate idea of what the condition of the property was before the storm happened but many times you don't have that so you come in there and you for example with the windows and doors i mean you know better than anybody you know a lot of times the windows and doors look fine just superficially when you're looking at it but you know at a, at a scientific level these windows are not going to be able to withstand hurricane force winds the next hurricane season and if these windows and doors don't get replaced or significantly you know repaired or reinforced somehow they're going to blow in and then now we have lives at risk, right? It becomes a human safety issue, especially when we're talking about towers. And that's one of the biggest arguments that I think, you know, we make all the time is insurance company, you know, you cannot let this risk linger because if you don't do something about these windows and doors, people could get, could get hurt. And that's what they have a policy for, you know, but we're, we're required to put that together because many times the insurance company doesn't hire experts like yourself to go and look at it at a forensic level like that. They just do a visual inspection. They do. You know, I, I guess the bottom line is it's complicated. <laughs> There's really so many nuances. And it's not just trying to read the policy, which heavens a Betsy. Yeah, That's complicated as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. And then it's interpreting it and, you know, and then trying to get treated fairly. And, and, and you know, you make a good point. Insurance companies need to, of course, be careful that they're that they're being treated fairly as well. So mm -hmm. the whole thing, I think, is just complicated. I did want to add one more thing. I mean, it is complicated, but it's not like policyholders out there don't have some recourse. You know, there are a lot of public insurance adjusters in the state of Florida, a lot of insurance lawyers, you know. And for example, at least our firm, I speaking for myself and for your firm, I mean, whoever's listening to this, if you want a free health check of your property, I mean, call us. If you want us to review your policy and let you know what coverages you have or what coverages you could add in, you know, that are, you know, common things we're running into that if you could change this one little thing in your policy, it can make a really big impact for you in the event of a storm. I mean, that's what we're here for. So it is complicated. It is going to be sometimes a, an uphill battle, especially with the bigger claims to get them paid because you have the burden of demonstrating a lot of these things. Okay. Um, but there are insurance professionals out there like yourself, Paul, and like myself, that are ready to help you with all of these issues and make sure that you're ready to go in the event you do have a store that need to make this claim. Yeah, really good information, Desmani. And hopefully nobody's going to need it this year. <laughs> but 
should be prepared regardless because the thing about these storms is once you know it's coming, you know, there's things you can do. You can take pictures and make sure you have your insurance policy and all that, but getting an ins inspection organized, you know, when there's a week or, or less before the, the event's going to hit, probably not going to happen. Absolutely. We've even coordinated times with a, with a big storm or we feel like a particular area of, uh, you know, the, the state is going to be hit harder than other areas. Those are the clients that we usually reach out to first and we say, hey, look, you know, it seems like your area is going to be targeted. You may have a lot of water loss. You know, you want us to go out there and have a team of people drop off air dehumidifiers. And we have a situation where we can, you know, have all of these things already left in your property so that if you do have a big water loss, we just go in there and plug it all in. You know, we already left, you know, the stuff to prevent mold, you know, the things to be able to dry out the water, for example. And that's in addition to having your property inspected, which we recommend, you know, have us go out there every year. We'll, we'll take a look at it every year. Make sure that you're ready to go and that there's nothing missing on your policy or, you know, you're ready for hurricanes, even at least from, from the perspective of being ready to make a claim. You know, and then from the perspective of just making sure that your unit owners are, are safe, making sure that your property is safe, there's sometimes things that you can do. Like, you know, if you have hurricane shutters, putting them on or boarding up window. Every building and, and property is going to be different, but those are things that, you know, we can offer at the time. It's like, okay, you're getting ready. If you, if you think a storm's coming, this is what we recommend to minimize the potential damages to your property. And, you know, we'll explain that to you at the time. Yeah, really great information. So, Jasmani, thanks so much for being guest today on the Everything Building Envelope podcast. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I really enjoyed having this uh, conversation with you and being able to help, you know, anybody that's listening out there. Great. So, Jasmani, do you want to tell our audience how they can get a hold of you and your firm if they have a need? Absolutely. Anybody that needs anything insurance related or wants to talk to our firm, about the issues that we discussed here or other custom issues for you, just email us at insurance at justice360.com. There, my entire insurance team from our firm is going to be able to receive that email and, and someone is going to respond to you, if not me, myself. And you could also give us a call at 305-300-3000. And your website is? Oh, our website is justice360.com. There you can go and, and take a look at our website. You could read a little bit more about me and the other attorneys in the office. I have some resources available for you to take a look at for things like hurricane preparedness, and you can see some of our, our former case settlements, uh, some of our former work, some of our, our work with, uh, with charities, how we give back to the community. Possible. Wow. Lots of resources. Really great. And I hope people in need can take advantage of that. So thanks again, Jasmani. Really good stuff. All right. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody. If you want more information about my company, GCI Consultants, our website is www.gciconsultants.com. You can also reach us at 877-740-9990, or you can send an email to info at gciconsultants.com. Thank you once again for listening. I look forward to talking with you next time on the Everything Building Envelope podcast. And this is Paul Beers and signing off saying so long. Thanks for joining us today. Please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. For more information on the Everything Building Envelope, previous episodes, show notes, bonus video content, and much more, check out our website, everythingbuildingenvelope.com.